If we go back to uh, 1458, on the, um, the issue of uh, the meeting with or, or the petition regarding declaration of the register of interests for the members of the judiciary. Um, the recommendations were uh, are included in terms of uh, what action the, the committee wishes to take, uh, one of which is to invite Moy Ally, the JCR, to give evidence to the committee at a future meeting or to take any other action that the committee uh, considers appropriate. Um, I'll, before making any personal comment, I'd clearly like to have the views of the, of the committee. Just to remind me, at the, at the last meeting, um, the committee took a decision that uh, there should be no further purpose in pursuing the Lord President. I made a personal point that I thought that to leave this, particularly in view of the fact that a government appointed individual like the JCR has particularly strong views, that while we uh, were talking about the constitutional principle, or the Lord President wants only to talk about the constitutional principle, that constitutional principle uh, would need to be cited, seen in the light of potential what might or might not happen in any constitutional changes going forward. Uh, so uh, the view was that we should uh, seek to close this off with him. Uh, but I would certainly recommend that we have Moy Alloy in here. Is it Moy Alloy or Moy Ali? Um, in here to, uh, to hear her views. Jackson. Convener, I would agree with that. I, in some respects, thought that matters had progressed to something of an impasse, but when I saw the uh, support for the proposal emerging from the Judicial Complaints Review, who is established under the Judiciary and Courts Scotland Act 2008 mm. in, in that position, uh, I felt that it would be, uh, given the weight of evidence so far from the establishment has been of one colour, it would be interesting to hear from somebody who exists in an official capacity why they take a different view. So I've not been involved with this, obviously, so I'd really like to ask a question because I obviously have read about Lord Gill and his view of judicial independence in relation to attending the committee and answering questions, but is his and other objections to the register, is that based on the same pr principle of judicial independence or is it really not to do with that at all? Because I don't know if anybody can answer that question because it seems to me the very interesting general questions about the line between judicial independence and um, accountability, political oversight are, are kind of raised by this, um, by this particular petition. Partly, in fact, in relation to another issue that I raised in the debate on victims and witnesses last week, where there was another issue about judicial independence. So I, I, I was really curious about that in terms of. Uh, I, I, th I think the view that was taken was that, that, that there are other means and mechanisms for checks and balances uh, in terms of recusal, for example, uh, that, that secures. You know, the, the secures the independence of the judiciary, but it doesn't expose them to uh, <laughs> to, to what they could. What I think is, is seen as a, is a breach of the a breach of the Scotland Act and a breach of, of how they can actually perform. Yeah, the, the, the register itself would be rather than just appearing here to answer questions about it. Is that what you're saying? That's well, that's <laughs> that's difficult. Why we, why we were struggling to see what oh. uh, when we're looking for openness and transparency that uh, the Lord President has chosen not to attend mm -hmm. to explain why there should not be a register of interests for, as there is for MPs, the police authority, um, and just, yeah, that's been his view. Jackson. Uh, convener, I think Lord Gill's response, which was actually something of an impasse from our point of view, was it's not happening down south. I and nobody else has any intention of doing it. Get your tanks off my vested interest lawn. Um, and it, we were unable, actually, to find a way to break through that. I think that's why the uh, information that we've received from the Judicial Complaints Reviewer potentially offers us an interesting additional extension of the discussion. But I don't think the actual interest 
the, of the petitioner was ever properly and fully addressed Correct. beyond saying, I don't happen to think it's necessary and neither does anybody else who is currently employed in this profession, surprisingly. John. I agree with Jackson and Carlo. That given that we've had the response from Judicial Complaints Reviewer, uh, and I think very interesting comments uh, within that response. It would be serve the committee some purpose to actually invite Moy Ali mm -hmm. to give evidence uh, and submit themselves to questioning by the committee to discuss this further. Hopefully, once we've had that evidence session, uh, Lord Gill may reconsider his position uh, in relation to Section 23, Subsection 7 of the Scotland Act 1998 which basically, as a, my interpretation would be, we are not allowed as a parliament or as committees of the parliament to call forward judges or sheriffs who are in, in relation to the, either judicial decisions that they have made and be accountable for those judicial decisions. But given Lord Gill's role as the Lord President, which is overseeing Good. the judiciary as the, the petitioner's main point, mm -hmm. I think hopefully Lord Gill may reconsider his position in light that we are taking further evidence and hopefully in that further evidence session we will draw out other issues of relevance to our deliberations. Uh, uh, so I, I would support Jackson Carlow's assertion that we bring along uh, the Judicial Complaints Reviewer to give evidence to the committee and take it forward from there. Okay, I think we should do that. We'll, we'll, we'll invite more along. I have to say, the, 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 it's somewhat paradoxical that having attended the Justice Committee, we were talking about the court service, that he was happy to, to come along there mm -hmm. and explain the, the rationale behind that, mm -hmm. uh, or not, as the case was. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, is there anything else on any of the petitions that we've discussed? Just to... to um, I reinforce the points made by oh, sorry. Mr. Carlaw and Mr. Wilson. I think, um, notwithstanding that the point that is made by the Lord President in his letter to the convener of the committee, that um, judges cannot be compelled under the Scotland Act to appear before committees of the Parliament, I do, I do note the, the statement in that letter that a register of interest for the judiciary is both unnecessary and unworkable, and it would have been beneficial if the committee had been able to uh, hear it, oral evidence from the Lord President as to why he thinks that is the case. Uh, and like John Wilson, I hope that that is something that he would uh, reconsider, but I would certainly uh, endorse um, the view that we should hear further evidence from other expert witnesses on this subject. Okay, agreed. Oh, sorry, um, Angus. Convener, could I yeah. um, draw the committee's attention to the letter from the petitioner um, that we received? Uh, recently, in which he um, asks the committee to approach the New Zealand Green Party member, uh, Dr Kennedy Graham, uh, of the New Zealand Parliament, who is currently putting his bill through. Um, a, the, the bill is a register of pecuniary interests of judges' bill, uh, and it's, I believe it's still currently going through the New Zealand Parliament. Um, it might be an idea to just to approach him, just to see if he has any further views that he could... Could give us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you write to Mr. What's his name? Kennedy. 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 Email. Yeah. We, we, would, we need to be very specific about what questions we're asking. I mean, there's recusal again, which, which he, the tense of the suggestion is that that's the way that the New Zealand government is, is tending to move. But um, I mean, there's no harm as we, we can select questions to, to send to him in terms of. So we can send. You got other questions? Well, he's brought, yeah, we can write to him, but you've also got to write, if you look at the, the correspondence, the New Zealand government are now considering it, but there's a tent, the government, I think, is tent, taking a view that they'd rather go down the route of saying what, what the recusals have actually been practiced, but um, there would be no harm in, in, why don't I formulate some questions up them around everybody to see if we could, act, we could actually write? Yeah, that'd be okay. fine, yeah. Potential future um, evidence session involving experts Firth of, of Scotland. I know that certainly uh, when the Health and Sport Committee considered the issue of minimum unit pricing of alcohol, we benefited greatly from evidence from um, experts in Canada, uh, notwithstanding the time 
differences between the two countries. I thought you were suggesting we were going to go out there, Jim, speed there. Right, uh, we, we, we've covered the position. Now, 